there's a uh, a quote on your Facebook. I don't know if you remember putting it, but let me know what it means to you. The future is just a stringing together of successful nows. Oh my God, that's such a good quote. That is whatever you could picture yourself doing. Backtrack from there. What's the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? Like the quote says, successful nows. No matter how big or small they are, just sort of chip away at it. Every piece that I make is another piece of the puzzle of, like you said, the future. Like what in God's name am I going to be making when I am 35? I have no idea. I didn't know I'd be drawing like I am now when I was 29, two years ago. Um, and this is some of the best, this, no, this is easily the best stuff that I've ever worked on. What's up, YouTube fam? Javier Mercedes here for another Inner Wednesday. Today on the show, we have a very special guest. He's got ideas, he's got woodworking, he's got art. He is an artist out of Seattle, Washington, Kyle Kroskoff of Kroskoff Images. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm good, Javi, I'm good. Ever since I knew you, there's two things that were for sure. This guy gets swole, and the guy <laughs> definitely the guy definitely makes some fantastic art. After you graduated and you got your degree, what did you do? Were you just straight into full-time art right off the bat, or? <laughs> when I got out of college, I was living on 18 hours a week at Old Navy. I'm assuming you were doing art on the side. Well, yeah, I was doing art on the side. It's funny to think about compared to now. I remember sitting on this shitty couch in Beach Grove in this terrible neighborhood in uh, Indianapolis thinking to myself, like, how do I even show somewhere that's not my university, not my school, whatever. I didn't know how to do anything, so I just kept creating. How did you get out to Seattle? It's about 60% a girl, 40% wanting to have a bigger art market. Talk to me about the Flying Bike Co-op Brewery. When they were building, they asked local artists to donate murals, and I was one of them. It turned out really well, and it's responsible for some of their branding, but it opened the door to a lot of opportunities. They were one of the people to get you grounded in Seattle. How else are you making your income and everything? Is it through commissions and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a fun fact that I've not been without a pending commission since junior year of high school. So you've always had something in the something. queue ever since. Something small or big, yeah. If you want to make money, they're like a big part of it. I have a lot of things lined up this year, shows, exhibitions, vending events, collaborations. It's actually the most exciting art year I've ever had. Speaking of vending events or just galleries in general, what goes into creating a gallery? Well, as far as the gallery, I sort of stumbled into that. <laughs> I'm borrowing it basically for several mm -hmm. months through a friend of mine who oddly enough purchased a sketch of a Rainier can that I did like two and a half years ago. That's crazy. So, <laughs> it's funny how that works. It was on social media and she commented on the picture of the crappy Rainier sketch. And she's like, I want to buy this. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? You're a self-sustained artist in Pike Place Market? I'll be right there. It's free. <laughs> You guys are basically sharing the space right now. Yeah. So talk to me about your woodworking. First thing that I caught on to was your, the animals and like you were doing one a day. Can you explain to the audience what exactly you were doing? Yeah, in 2014, I was circling this idea where I wanted to do a project that required me to make art every day, all year long. I, I was thinking about this and actually my friend Ryan Thrower was driving out here to move out here, but he was driving in my car. And I was like, my only stipulation of you using my car is that you bring my scroll saw. It's just a very tiny reciprocating blade about the size of a pencil lead. So this allows you to make very intricate, detailed cuts in wood that you don't generally see because not a lot of people have access to a scroll saw. So anyway, I get my scroll saw back and I am, and I'm going to a New Year's party and 2015 happened to be the year of the ram. So I made a bunch of wooden rams for everyone that was going to be at the New Year's party really hung over the next day laying on the couch looking at one of these rams and i was like why don't i just make an animal every day this year <laughs> this is so kyle i love it man <laughs> we come to find out that this is so kyle that is so kyle but i didn't know it the time <laughs> that project changed me it's 365 different animals one cut out every single day of that year 
Yeah, when I saw you doing it, I was like, how does he how does he have the time to do this? Holy cow. Well, the cutting had to happen on the day, but I would design them in batches. Um, I have stencils for all of them. They all are designed to touch all four sides of a four inch square, so they can geometrically kind of interlock. They all touch each other if you put them in a grid. So if somebody were to ask for another one of those woodworks that you made, would you be able to replicate it? Yeah, I still have all the stencils. How, do, how does that work? Is it just like you cut around the, what, what exactly is a stencil? Well, I have one handy. Um, so they're just paper. Oh, okay. Cut out of paper. So, and then, you, and put then the, uh, you put the saw. I just trace it onto a piece of wood, cut out the final product. The other thing that I loved about that, when it would get to the end of a month, you would take them swimming. <laughs> Can you explain? <laughs> so at the end of each month, I would arrange them together to just like track the month's progress. First one was just on dining room table. And then I got into like, oh, I'll use different substrates. So I used a blank sheet of white paper and then I found a brick sidewalk. The next one was like, they're wood. I'm gonna float these on water. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were jumping off a cliff, throwing them into the water as well. <laughs> yeah, I cliff jumped with one month. I think in the caption it said that you did the shot four times jumping off oh, a cliff. Oh, that would throw her. so bad. We were trying to get a still shot, like a movie poster, like me throwing one at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> did it work? <laughs> no, it didn't work. So every time you hit the water, you'd have to go pick them up? All 30 of them and climb back to the top of the, bro <laughs> climb back to the, top of the cliff. <laughs> you did that four times. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I I say I designed these in batches, right? The first batch I designed had this whale, and he was just a dope. <laughs> and I cut him, I cut the stencil out, just the stencil, and I thought to myself, I am going to wait for a bad day to cut this one out. It'll make me feel better. And I had it like on the shelf, special spot, whale day. I had a bad day, and I traced it out, and I went to cut it, and I was like, this cannot be my worst day of this year. And so I put it back. And I did that two or three more times and it gave rise to the mantra of today is not a whale day. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. So what I ended up doing with him is I didn't use, he's not part of the project. He's the 366th animal. And he is somewhere on a, sh on like a bank of a river in Canada because I bungee jumped uh, with him in my back pocket. <laughs> really? Dropped him into the river. Kyle has this thing that he does that's like this really giving and awesome, I guess, art that he does where he takes like one of his friends or just something that he's thinking about at the time and he does a portrait of him and then he writes stuff over to the side. That's a good one. So I found myself driving to work repeatedly, like singing in the car. I live in Seattle, Washington, doing art all the time. But I thought like, who's responsible for this? Who do I have to thank for where I am? So all of these people started rolling through my heads. My, my friends that helped me along my way, my parents, ex-girlfriends, teachers, you know, examining what impact that person has had on your life because, you know, we all have help. Nobody's doing everything on their own. Can you explain the idea behind buy or burn? <laughs> when I saw it for the first time, I was like, what the, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, fir the first time I did a buy or burn sale was when I was gonna move to Seattle, actually. And I had all this work from, you know, high school, uh, junior high, early college courses, and there's no sense in keeping that shit. <laughs> and unless it connected with somebody on a level that they wanted to save it from getting set on fire, like I don't have any strong connection to crappy work that I did eight years ago. So to instigate sales, I was like, if you don't buy these pieces, I'm gonna burn whatever's left. So uh, that was actually really fun. Cause I mean, it was a auction-ish, you could haggle and stuff, but uh, I burned a fair amount of work. Is there any other projects you got going on right now? So I'm doing a collaborative art project with 12 female artists located throughout the US, the UK, and Canada. Each one of them has chosen a month to be the collaborative artist. They tell me whose portrait to draw, and we're doing all portraits of influential women, but it's their choice. So they tell me who to draw, I draw that person, and then mail it to the artist, and then they finish it. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, however, whatever they want to do to it, I was like, speaking of fire, they can set it on fire if they want, as long as they can tell me why they had to set it on fire. <laughs> At the end of the project, we are gonna ship the entire 12 pieces, the whole body of work, to each person's city 
for them to show in their city. That's crazy. How did you how did you get set up with that? I made it up, man. <laughs> I don't know. You so so you were the you were the one that started it. That's I, great. I made it up. And I I went through probably 50 different people trying to get 12 collaborators and uh, I think I have the perfect 12 for what we're doing. If you were to give advice to other artists, besides the other stuff that you've already talked about is really cool ideas, what would you say to people that are doing art for a living um, or trying to pursue that? Uh, it seems like, and I, I know this about you, that you're very motivated and obviously you're, you're, you're creating, you're creating all the time. What would you tell other people that want to pursue art? Chase whatever validates you and your work. Goals reach like next level all the time and this is just because I'm never happy with where I'm at. Like you could always do better work, become a better artist. And I personally believe that that is through introspection, thought, and just sheer volume of work. Think about what you don't like about your work and work on that part. Like if you want to do more realism, look harder, like look more, look at more attention. Look at how an eyelash is fatter as it is connected to the eyelid than it is at the end, at the tip. Like those are the things you have to look at if, that, if you're looking for realism. Um, if you want to be more spontaneous, just get a huge ass sheet of paper and throw a bucket of paint at it and see what happens. You gotta ask yourself what you want out of it or what it gives to you. For those of you out there, you can catch Kyle on Instagram at Kyle Crosscroft, so good luck spelling that. All right, Kyle, thank you so much, man. Yeah. And I hope this has been uh, good for all the viewers out there. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, check out Kyle's artwork, please. If you need a portrait, there's no other more badass of a portrait that could be done That's other true. than by Kyle Crosstoff. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, man. Thank you, you're welcome. And until next Inner Wednesday, I will catch you guys later. Bye.